I know it's juvenile, but I think my music's beautiful. And when I grab the mic, I grip it tight to get my cuticles and chew you fools to pieces. When I eat you, you'll be future proof. Five star general, you ain't even recruitable. What's up, my wizards? It's Deb from SBMTG on the YouTube.com. Down there, we like magic. And today, super special day. The entire set has been revealed. All the Kaladesh spoilers are over, which means it's the official start of brewing season. Woo! That's right, Garnet. And one of the color combinations that's been getting a lot of attention, at least in the preseason here, is Boros. But the key here is which Boros? There's a Boros Equipments deck in the format right now that looks pretty fast, pretty synergistic. There's a Boros like Zoo Aggro deck in the format that just plays a bunch of good cards. That deck looks really good too, pretty fast. There's even a big Boros deck right now. Will it rear its beautiful head? Who knows? We're working on that too. But the other thing that everyone's talking about, in terms of Boros at least, is vehicles. Is the Boros Vehicles deck any good? Turns out, I think so. It's really fast when it wants to be. It sees a lot of cards over the course of the game, and it's got a sort of mid-range plan if it comes to that. So I like a lot about this deck, and I'm going to go ahead and show it to you. Let's start with the creatures in our aggro deck, and we'll move through the curve here, starting with what I think are two of the most important cards in the entire deck, Toolcraft Exemplar, which you're playing a four of, and also a four of Inventor's Apprentice. Both of these are really good and in some ways they're the foundation of the deck you know they're why we're playing 12 whole artifacts that can be in play by turn two and so in that way in that way they've arguably influenced the deck's final design more than anything else um, and you need these guys on turn one it's cool to have one drops that are really relevant in the early game because not only will you get a lot of damage in early but these once they lose their relevance and get outclassed by your opponent's creatures can just move into the mode where they start crewing your vehicles for you so they'll always have some form of relevance and these are just some of the most value based one drops like almost of all time like inventor's apprentice is basically a cur ape people call it nerd ape um, which is a great name if you have an artifact. And then Toolcraft Exemplar is a, a one mana three power guy. So, like, these we've got to play all, you know, basically eight copies of these because they do, in some ways, again, form the basis of the deck. And Toolcraft Exemplar just looks like kind of a better card than Inventor's Apprentice, you know, but they definitely have their strengths and weaknesses. Sure, Toolcraft Exemplar is a fast creature, no doubt, but Inventor's Apprentice will survive Liliana's plus one, which will actually be really, really, really important, and has been at least so far in my playtesting that I've done. So just keep that in mind. Inventor's Apprentice will survive Liliana, which makes it a very solid one drop. Moving on through the creatures, we're going to play four copies of Bomac Courier. That gives us 12 total one drops. And some people might balk at the inclusion of a four of here. I could get behind a three of, but I like having the fourth because this card is a little bit better than it looks. It doesn't just do what, it's, what it says on the card, right? It has synergies in the deck, too. This is basically the thing that gives us, you know, as many ways as possible, or one of the things that gives us as many ways as possible of having an artifact on the battlefield by turn two. Very important for our other two one drops. Also, this can on turn two come down and swing with your one drop, making up to four damage on turn two, which isn't bad at all. And if you play it on turn one, you can go ahead and exile a card. You've got that for as long as this guy's out. Of course, the card will still be exiled if this guy dies. You just can't ever play it, which is kind of dumb. <laughs> but in any case, that's the worst thing about the card. But against control, this card really shines, comes down sometimes on turn one, and will end up exiling two or three cards for you. And then a couple of things will happen. You'll either be able to, on an empty hand, refill in the mid game, which is very, very good against control. You know, you get two, three cards in the mid game once you're on an empty hand, that's good. Or they'll have to burn a removal piece on this thing so you don't get to draw a couple of cards. And sure, it feels like you lost some card advantage in that situation um, and you kind of did but you got them to, re to to burn a remove spell um, a removal spell on this one mana one one haste guy which is which is actually kind of good and yeah once your opponent drops something that outclasses it you don't want to swing with it anymore you'll no longer be exiling cards or anything but it's not completely useless at that point it's still an artifact so it'll still turn on the other one drops and it can help crew vehicles and such for you so pretty good card here that does a lot of different things for the deck other than just what's printed on it and the last thing I'll say is that a lot of one drops are bad top decks, but this is actually a sort of decent top deck. You know, in the late game, you can play it for one mana on an empty hand, other than it, obviously. Play it, your hand's empty, go ahead and swing with it, and it kind of doesn't matter if they block and kill it or not. You're going to get at least one card of it, out of it. So late game, this basically reads as two mana, draw a card, which is not terrible in aggro when you've got the mana to burn a little bit later in the game. You need to finish it out, see as many cards as possible. This can actually help you do that, so it's not a bad top deck.
We're playing a four of servo exhibition in the deck, which looks like a weak card, but this is really, really good. This is actually the best way to put an artifact on the battlefield on turn two for your one drops, because now your opponent has to blow two things up to then turn off the one drops again. That's really good. Also in this deck, a wide board benefits us greatly because we can choose what to do with our power. You know, some of our guys can hang back to block or crew vehicles, and some of our power can go in to attack. So it's good to have a wide board in this deck so you can have a range of options with what you want to do in combat. And not to mention, we have a few different ways to pump our creatures in this deck, not only in the main, but also out of the sideboard. So again, wide board is very, very good. Don't, don't pass on this card. It, again, it looks like a weak card. This card is very, very good for this strategy. Also in the two drop slot, we're gonna play four copies of Veteran Motorist. Veteran Motorist is dope. The old, you know, um, Theros block, you know, blue, white, and Esper control decks would often play Omen Speaker on turn two to get a good blocker on the battlefield and skim through a couple of cards, fix some draws for the next couple of turns. Good play for control. This is basically Omen Speaker, but like a little bit more aggrofied, you know. Um, it, it switches the power and toughness on Omen Speaker. I feel like that's a callback, almost. Um, so that's really good, you know. <laughs> a 1 or a 3 1 um, for 2 mana, always good. And the cool thing about Scry 2 on turn 2 in aggro is it allows you to fix your draws for the next couple of turns. This is not just good in control, but also in aggro where your, your first few draws of the game, up to turn 4 or 5, can really make or break the entire game so getting to fix your draws for the next couple of turns early in the game is insanely good for aggro and even if it didn't have the you know whenever it crews a vehicle it gets a buff even if it didn't have that the card may be worth playing because a two mana three power guy that scries two when he enters the battlefield is really freaking good remember that um, creatures can crew vehicles on the turn they enter the battlefield summoning sickness only applies to if the creature wants to attack or use abilities that have attack in the activation cost. Crew doesn't apply in that case. You can tap a creature to crew a vehicle on the turn it enters the battlefield. So this can crew something right when it enters the battlefield, give it the plus one, plus one, and you get to scry two. Like, immediate effect on the battlefield, very, very good, and lets you fix draws. Just This card is phenomenal. We're playing three copies of Pia Nalar, and she doesn't look immediately apparent for the deck, right? But she is extremely, this card is amazing, you guys. Like, I suspect that the card may be pretty good, but honestly, this card has blown me away. Because it just does everything. It puts three power for three mana onto the battlefield. One of that power flies. You get to split it between two creatures. It pumps artifact creatures, providing a good mana sink in the mid and late game for our aggro deck. Once we're out of cards in our hand, we can still spend our mana and pump our guys, especially the flyer that she puts into play. Or maybe a smuggler's copter, you know. Um, so all of that is good. And that last ability is maybe the best ability on the card and maybe the most innocuous looking. You know, the, That last ability doesn't look great or anything, but it wins entire games by itself, you know, sacrifice the servo, your biggest guy can't block, or sacrifice this vehicle, that happens sometimes, sacrifice this vehicle I'm not even going to swing with anyway, and then, you know, this dude can't block, basically remove him from combat for the rest of the turn, swing with all my small guys. So, this card is actually crazy, and again, do not discount that last ability. Once you start playing with this card, that last ability will come immediately apparent why it's very good, I promise you. And again, just like Servo Exhibition, this card helps you establish a wide board, which is really good in this deck, because again, you can use some of the power to crew vehicles, you can attack, you can leave some up to block, you know. Just, we're versatile in that way, but kind of that way alone. But, it's a pretty important way to be versatile. And we're playing two copies of Depala in the deck. And you could play three copies, but when I played three, I felt like I was seeing her a lot. You know, we've got... Um, the Bomat Courier, we've got, obviously, Depala herself, but I'm really just counting Bomat Courier and Smuggler's Copter, you know. We've got plenty of ways of, of effectively drawing cards in this deck, and we will get to Depala a lot of the time. And even if we don't, she's not insanely amazing. Sure, the buff to the vehicles and the dwarves, very, very good. And she can be card advantage, yes. But aside from that, she's kind of a vanilla 3-3. And she is a good anthem effect. Again, don't get me wrong, the card is good. I just don't want to have to see her all the time. And she's not going to be running up into combat too much. She's mostly going to be crewing vehicles, obviously. So she's a little bit more protected that way. She won't die as easily or as quickly. And it's okay to run one fewer copies of her. Again, especially because we're seeing a lot of cards in this deck. But the card is very good. Don't get me wrong. Into the vehicles, though, we're going to play four copies of Smuggler's Copter at two drop here. And Smuggler's Copter is easily one of the best cards in the entire deck. Seriously. You play it on turn two, and then by turn three, you're swinging with a 3-3 three, three flyer in the air 
on turn three. That's like Mantis Ridery. It's really good. And you get to draw a card. It's a May ability, by the way, so you don't have to. If you don't want to discard a card, that's fine. But either way, you get to loot, and that helps you see more cards. Card selection is good. We're going through a lot of cards in this deck, and once you have a couple of copters out, you can move through your deck pretty quickly if that's what you choose to do. So Copter is just very good, very easy to crew, and can get online really, really fast. I'm telling you, one of the all-stars in the deck, and Smuggler's Copter will probably even be in the red-white zoo deck that doesn't really focus on vehicles at all. It's just that good. Don't be surprised if you see this in like every aggro deck in the format. I've messed around with a lot of four-drop vehicles, trying to figure out what I want to do in this slot. I've tried Bomat, Bizarre Barge. That was actually pretty good. Not bad. No, not quite bad. But I wanted something a little bit faster and ultimately chose Fleet Wheel Cruiser, which we're going to play a three of. Fleet Wheel Cruiser is good and can sometimes help you just end the game when it comes down on turn four. I like that you don't have to crew it. That's really awesome. Or at least the turn it comes into play. You don't have to crew it. And sometimes... That's all you need. The five power coming down on turn four combined with everything else we've done up to that point in the game can often end the game if our opponent has gotten a slow start, gotten mana screwed, or is a slower deck. You know, Another deck that's gotten a lot of press is Control, whether it be Esper or Blue-White. And in the testing I've been doing for both Blue-White and Esper, I've tested it against this deck. And this deck, if it gets a fast enough start, just eats it alive by turn four because that deck no longer has Languish. So... This deck can really be fast when it wants to, and Fleet Wheel Cruiser is a big part of the fast plan. So, can't beat the fleet as far as four drops go. And I'm just going to play one copy of Sky Sovereign to finish off the vehicles. That's eight total vehicles. You don't want to play a bunch of vehicles in the deck because there are times where they can be useless. Sit on the battlefield like a big hot dog and you just can't do anything with it, you know. So you don't want to go crazy with your vehicles here in this deck. Um, but you do want to play all the really good ones, and I think we're trying to do that here. Hopefully there will be more vehicles in Aether Revolt, um, because we do have a decent selection of vehicles, but it doesn't feel full enough yet. You know, we could use a really, really good three-drop one besides Caravan, which is not terrible, not bad at all. I was originally playing it. Um, but we could use another good three drop and a really standout four drop. But that being said, let's talk about Sky Sovereign. I just wanted to get that out of the way. Let's talk about Sky Sovereign for just a second here. Sky Sovereign is crazy. I don't want to play too many things at five drop here, so I'm only going to play one copy of this card. And as I've already said, we're seeing a bunch of cards in this deck. Smuggler's Copter, you know, Dipala, Bomat Courier. We're seeing a ton of cards in this deck, so one copy of this is all we necessarily need, especially considering it's going to be slightly tough to get rid of a lot of the time. And it's a good source of removal. You know, we're not playing a ton of removal in the main deck at least. So this can help remove smaller creatures. It flies over for six. It survives being blocked by Abyssin or something. You know, a lot of good stuff that this does. And when it swings in, it will also ping creatures off, clearing the way for your smaller guys. So a lot of good things about this, but I don't want to go overboard. Get it overboard. It's a skyship. We're playing two planeswalkers in the deck, and they're both Gideon ally of Zendikar, which I know people are going to be like, budget, huh? But but, again, this deck is not quite budget. I think it's one of the most competitive versions of this deck that you can possibly build. And this is the most expensive card in it, hands down. But it does so much for this deck that I feel like you've got to play it, whether in the main or in the side. you got to do it right now, because we are a little susceptible to mass removal in this deck, you know. In some ways, it's a double-edged sword, because if we get hit by sweepers, we lose all of our small guys, and our vehicles are out there, so if we play creatures again, we can crew our vehicles and get right back online. But, while we're trying to get the, the back online, our vehicles are completely useless. So, sometimes it feels like a double-edged sword, but mostly, we don't want to get hit by sweepers. And that can really stop us in our tracks, especially with Fumigate in the format. So, Gideon can really help us out with that. We can get hit by sweepers and he can just put us right back online, make a creature for us that can crew vehicles and help us get going, you know. And Gideon is just really good in a lot of situations, but mostly, he is our best hope against control. He's our greatest ally against control. Terrible jokes. Speaking of horrible jokes, I was going to play Chandra. That's not the joke. I was going to play Chandra in this deck, but when I tried her out, she felt a little clunky in this strategy. She's going to be really, really good in mid-range and control shells, but in this strategy, didn't much care for. But a lot of people are calling this deck the Fast and the Furious, which is an awesome name for this deck. Uh, but I wanted to be able to play multiple Planeswalkers in this deck, so I could call it Paul Walkers, but it didn't work out. We miss you, Paul. But on to the spells here. We're playing six of them in all, and four of them are Servo Exhibition, and the other two are Declaration and Stone. I just wanted access to some cheap removal in the deck, you know, targeted removal of some kind for low on the curve. And this is really good against other token strategies that we're up against. You know, sometimes we play this, and then we can just swing through on their almost 
this naked board. 23 lands in the deck, and something important to point out is that Needle Spires is good, because if you get hit by a sweeper, it can still crew vehicles for you, at least Smuggler's Copter. Um, so that's, that is definitely something to remember, and has been an important point in a couple of games so far. But pretty cut and dried mana base for the most part, this is easy. Here's our insanely important sideboard. We've got a lot of really good options for sideboards in Boros right now. And I want to talk about Galvanic Bombardment first. Now this could definitely be in the main deck. It all depends on how good aggro is in this upcoming format. A lot of people are speculating, but nobody's quite sure. Um, but if aggro is a thing, it could definitely be moved to the main deck. There's a really good play available to us after boards in this, in this build at least. Um, where you play like turn one Exemplar or Inventor's Apprentice, and then turn two you play Bomac Courier, and then blow away their turn one or turn two drop with a Galvanic Bombardment, letting you swing through with your guys. That can set you up very well for the rest of the game. So that can be a very, very good play, and I'd like it to be available in the main deck. I'm just not quite sure aggro will be the force that some people say it's going to be. Three Reckless Bushwhacker is mostly in there when you need to go very low to the ground as fast as possible. You take out your Fleet Wheel Cruisers and you put this stupid thing in and just try to kill them by turn four. It, it gets a lot easier when you got Bushwhacker. <laughs> Trust me, Bushwhacker is really, really good. And then another Gideon to, again, tidy up the plan against Control. But here are your power rankings right here. Final score of 65, which is pretty good. That is definitely just past the edge of very competitive as far as I'm concerned. And there's relatively good news. Again, it's not a budget deck necessarily. But all in all, the main deck will cost you about $110 with the lands included. And the sideboard will cost you about $30. So you're looking at about $140, $150 at the very top end on TCGPlayer.com, which is not bad considering a lot of these cards are from the new set. They're from Kaladesh, so the deck will last you for quite some time. And this deck is quite solid. There's a lot of little plays that are available to you, and a lot of good turn sequences in the early game that you'll start discovering as you go through it. Definitely proxy this thing up and play around with it for the next week until Kaladesh comes out for realsies, you know. Because um, I do think that this deck could have some play in the upcoming standard. If not this, then just the, you know, zoo version of the deck. But either way, I think Boros will be a force coming up. All depends on what else the meta shapes up to look like, but I think this deck definitely has a ton of potential and is a lot of fun to play. It's also smarter than the average aggro deck, you know. When you play veteran motorist, you gotta scry too. Well, it's sometimes scrying too is a very important decision, especially on turn two or three. You can either make or break the rest of the game for yourself, depending on what decisions you make when you scry too. Same thing with smuggler's copter. Sure, you get to draw the card, you also have to discard a card. So you have to be very, very wary and aware of what's going on, you know, what your opponent is playing, what pieces you'll need the most in this situation. Um, to know what to discard and what not to discard. So the deck is a little bit smarter. Also, you have to know what you can afford to leave back to crew your guys and what you need to attack with. A lot of decisions to be made in this aggro deck. So it's not just a dumb swing everything aggro deck. There's a lot of decisions to be made. And with that, I think I've said everything I have to say about this deck for now. But continue this talk of ours in the comments section. Go down there and let me know how you felt about not only my card choices, but how you'd alter the deck given the chance, because there's a lot of ways we can build Boros right now, and I want to know what your ideas for it are, and by the end of all of this, we'll have this sucker built and ready to go for the Pro Tour. So, <laughs> let me know how you felt about all of these, and then like the content if you like the content, sub if you're new, and what are we doing next time? Well, next time, I want to completely shift you know, the paradigm entirely, and not talk about aggro, but talk about control, the other thing that everyone's talking about right now. <laughs> Control's the talk of the town, too. Whether it's Esper or, um, uh, you know, just straight up blue-white, a lot of people are talking about that. So I'm working on control right now, a couple of different builds, and that is what I'm going to bring you next time in just a couple of days. So sub if you're new so you can get that, and I will see you guys later. I'm Deb from SBMTG. Thanks for watching, my wizards. Woo!